Dear Gromit, I must stop eating cheese last thing. It's given me terrible dreams. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, last night, I dreamt I'd accidentally become engaged to our neighbor, Miss Flit. Oh, oh, oh. Can you imagine? What's this? Oh no, lad. So it wasn't a bad dream after all. It's a real life flipping nightmare. It's all coming back to me at the fair. I found that luck nut and she thought it was a... Oh my kitty aunt. Talk about matrimonial misunderstandings. You've got to do something, Gromit. Uh, no. I've got to do something. I must go and speak to Miss Flit at once. I apologize and explain it was all a terrible mistake. I'm sure Miss Flit will understand. She'll probably be relieved when she learns I wasn't proposing marriage after all. It's not as if we've much in common. <laughs> well, I suppose there's nothing for it but to, uh... Oh, Major Crumb. Yes? Ah, morning, Wallace. I've come about a professional matter of the utmost delicacy and secrecy. You have? Oh, wonderful. Uh, step into my consulting room and tell me all about it. Seems I'm going to be tied up for a while, Gromit. Uh, on business, uh, why don't you go and put your ear to the ground and find out how the land lies next door? Yes, I just remembered. Oh, you have. Yes, something that means a great deal to me. Uh, go on. Not just me, but to all of us. It's terribly important. It is? This is a matter of the utmost importance, Wallace, or I wouldn't have come. I appreciate your faith in my skills, Major. Faith has nothing to do with it. Facts are what we need, man. Cold, hard facts. Of course. So, uh, uh what have you lost? An object. Precisely. Uh, can you be more specific? I certainly can. How specific would you like me to be? Well, uh... We at Golden Retrieval always like to know what it is we're looking for. For a start, could you tell me what the object is? Yes, of course. It's... it's... Oh, fiddlesticks, I've forgotten. Oh. Gone. Clean out of my mind. Hmm. Well, uh, that's a poser. An imposter? Where? Uh, no, I mean it's a problem because we... Out with it, man! Spit it out! Oh, uh, well, although we at Golden Retrieval believe the customer is always right, we may find it a little tricky to uh, uh, um, retrieve your lost item if you can't identify what it is. I didn't say I can't identify it! Uh, you didn't? No, that'd be idiotic. Do I look like an idiot? Uh, by the way, Major, uh, what do you think of me new painting? Why, it's very... By George, it's a masterpiece! I can identify the object perfectly well. Oh, oh excellent. And I shall identify it as soon as you fellas find it and bring it to me. It's not going to be an easy job. No, it isn't. It's going to be deuced difficult. That's why my colleague... You might from it. I'm in consultation. But I won't stand... You might from it. I'm in consultation. You're detectives, aren't you? Registered and certified. 
Ignite her fire! Merely porridge, Major Crumb. Uh, carry on. Grom it, please. But you need to be discreet. If there's any information gathering to be done, my eavesdropper is just the tool for it. Eavesdropper? I like the sound of it. And if they put the thumbscrews on you, Wallace... Oh, Gromit and I would never divulge your professional secret. Good man! I suppose we can start hunting for clues with my super clue snooper. Capital idea! Uh, still? Now, have you got all you need to get started? Uh, not quite. Found it, have you? I can't put Gromit on the case until I've got all the uh, relevant information. No answers yet in the, uh, flit case, Gromit. You may want to use some of my equipment. That's right. Put the thumbscrews on her. Ah, yes, I just remembered. Oh, yeah. Gromit, lad, have you managed to learn anything from you-know-who? <gasps> Is you-know-who involved in this? A different case, Major. No answers yet in the, uh, flit case, Gromit. You may want to use some of my equipment. That's right. Put the thumbscrews on her. This is a matter of the utmost importance, Wallace, or I wouldn't have come. I appreciate your faith in my... Aha! You found it! Wait. No, that's not it. So, uh, uh what have you lost? An object. Precisely. Great Aunt Prudence, you came so quickly. Of course, Felicity. An urgent summons from one's only living relative and heir to one's fortune can mean only one thing. Man trouble. Now, who is the blighter this time? I'll box his ears if he's been toying with your affections. Oh, no, no trouble as such, Aunt Prudence. But, well, there has been an important development on the matrimonial front, which... Pardon me, Aunt Prudence. I think I spy an ugly little intruder. Positively loathe fungi. Come, let's go inside for a cup of tea. Have you come, a mild child? Man trouble always makes me hackles rise and my petticoats fluster. a little picker. Yes, um, inventions and such like. A handyman? Well, you'll obviously have to put a stop to the inventing. Certainly not in the house. Can't be tolerated. Oh, oh no. Far too messy and intrusive. Well, I think you've told me all I need to hear. And so? So long as he doesn't leave his contraptions lying around all over the house, he sounds a very suitable suitor. So our engagement has your blessing? 
I don't see why not. Unless... Yes? Unless, of course... Well, he's not... He's not a member of that... Place, is he? That appalling country club whose name alone makes me shudder. You mean Prickly Thicket? Oh, yes. Oh, heaven's child, you know our family history. We flits have never associated with those dreadful Prickly Thicketers. Oh, you needn't worry, Aunt Prudence. Well, this isn't the Prickly Thicket type. Being next door neighbours means the parlour will be twice as large once we knock the wall down and I'll be able to do all my repotting in the cellar. I thought you said he did his inventing in the cellar. Not for much longer. I'll soon get him started on another hobby. I was thinking geraniums. So long as it's not golf, you'll have my blessing. Oh, Aunt Prudence, Wallace really isn't the outdoorsy type. There's no chance of him joining that country club and becoming a prickly thicketer. I should hope not. No relative of mine will ever marry a prickly thicket man, not while I have breath in my body. More chamomile? I must say, Aunt Prudence, I still don't understand your antipathy towards prickly thicket. You don't need to understand it, my girl. Just accept it. We flits have felt antipathy towards prickly thicketers for generations. Well, far be it from me to break a family tradition. Don't be flippant, Felicity. If I discover your intended is a... Oh, you needn't worry on that score. There's no possibility that Wallace is a member of prickly thicket. Believe me. And this Wallace of yours, you're quite sure he's entirely unconnected to that horrible club? Quite sure, Aunt Prudence. Wallace couldn't possibly be a member of Prickly Thicket. Now, have you got all you need to... No answers yet in the, uh, flit case, Gromit. You may want to use some of my equipment. That's right. Put the thumbscrews on her. Ah, yes, I've just remembered. Oh, you have. Yes, something that means a great deal to me. Uh, go on. Not just me, but to all of us. It's terribly important. It is? This is a matter of the art. But you'll need to be discreet. No answers yet in the, uh, flit case, Gromit. You may want to use some of my equipment. That's right. Put the thumbscrews on her. And if they put the thumbscrews on you, Wallace... Oh, uh, Gromit and I would never divulge your professional secret. Good man! Now, have you got all you need to get started? Uh, not quite everything. Dash it! What more can I tell you? This object you've lost. Lost something? Who has? Ah, yes, I just remembered. Oh, you have. Yes, something that means a great deal to me. Ah, yes, the, uh, situation with Miss Flit. Uh, have you resolved the case? You've solved my case? Uh, not yours, Major. Uh, uh, you were saying? This is a matter of the utmost importance, Wallace, or I wouldn't have come. Good heavens, the resemblance is uncanny. So, uh, uh, what have you lost? An object. Morning, Mr. Paneer. Constable Dibbins. Delivering the mail as well this morning? 
Aye, post is off sick. He's got the mumps and I've got the um. Sorry to hear that. Her Majesty's mail must be delivered, and PC Ernie Stibbins has never shrunk from duty, even when such duties aren't even part of his blinking job description. Here's your post. Ah. Couldn't help but notice the coat of arms, Mr. Paneer. A prickly thicket, isn't it? Happen. So, you remember then? Hmm? Oh, aye, aye. Practically my second home. Is it now? That's a very interesting coincidence. I was just saying to myself the other day, Ernest Dibbins, it's time you joined a... Oh, my! Excuse me, Constable. What are you staring at? Get along now. I'm running out of room in my shop. What am I going to do with all this nut butter? I'm running out of room in my shop. Back off. Caught him trying to nick your letter. The important one from <clears throat> Prickly Thicket. Oh, that's only the envelope. I've got the letter here. Not bad news, I trust. Oh no, quite the reverse. It's my turn to propose a new member. Is it really? Well, I never. It's a heavy responsibility. Not everyone's cut out to be a prickly thicketer. The candidate must be a gentleman of impeccable character. Someone who's always there for a friend in need. A pillar of the community. And of course, a sportsman. Going to be a long search? Uh, not necessarily. I mean... The ideal candidate might be, uh, somebody who's very close to you. Oh? Aye, somebody who's right in front of your nose, in fact. Ah, yes, of course. You mean Mr. Wallace, my near neighbour and one of my best customers. Wallace? He's no blinking sportsman. He don't know one end of a golf club from t'other. Well, that's true. And he's hardly a pillar of the community, like... Like who? Mr. Paneer. My dear Mr. Paneer. Who watches over this town centre like a shepherd watches his flock? Who sees to it that everybody stays on the straight and narrow? Oh, you mean you? <laughs> but don't forget... You forgot to find me after that business with the bad bangers last month. Only on account of me soft heart. It's me only failing. But don't start getting ideas. I'll let you off with a warning once, but just once. Of course, Constable. Now, you better start getting these crates put away. They're blocking a public thoroughfare. Oh dear, not more crates. Good day, Mr. Paneer. I'll leave you to uh, think things out. Out of me way, you! Hey, up, Gromit. Where'd you come from? I weren't really thinking straight when I said your master might be prickly thicket material. He's a right good bloke, your Wallace. But, like the PC says, if he's a sportsman, I'm a banana. Oh. Thought maybe it was the constable come back. Good old PC Dibbins. You know, he never issued me a fine. Not even when me mothball display collapsed and buried poor Mrs. Entwistle. That's the sort of fellow you want to keep on side. Me mind's made up, uh, I think. Can you imagine your Wallace on a golf course? <laughs> he wouldn't know his mashy from his niblick. A niblick. It's a golf club, like a brassy, or is it a baffy, or a biffy? Yes, indeed. We're lucky to have an officer like Dibbins on our beat. The sort of bobby what looks out for the small businessmen, who ain't too quick to slap a fine on him for every minor health and safety violation. That's the sort of bloke a fellow wants in his club. You know I like your master, Gromit, but, well... In this town, 
Dibbins is the sort who can make things happen for me. Wallace is more the sort who makes them happen to me. You get the distinction? Yes, I'm going to propose Dibbins for membership of Prickly Thicket. He's always gone in to bat for me, and I should do the same for him. It's decided then, and don't try and persuade me out of it. Wallace may be a gentleman and a scholar, but he ain't no sportsman. Don't suppose you can use a few crates of super sticky nut butter, can you? I ordered five tubs, but the daft taper at warehouse put me down for 500. How am I supposed to shift 500 tubs of super sticky nut butter? Wait a minute. Take this home to your master. Free sample, courtesy of Paneer's Produce. If you don't like it, you can always use it to fill in cracks before decorating. Keep your master's picture on you, do you? You're a sentimental dog, you are. Oh, thought maybe it was the constable come back. Good old PC Dibbins. You know, he's me minds me. Kids love it, they say. Makes good fertilizer too. by order of the law, and all on account of a teeny tiny mouse. Oof, ridiculous, really. But you know Constable Dibbins. He'll let a lot of things go, but he's a stickler when it comes to vermin. Eee, it's good to have young'uns about flat again. And Mr. Muzzle seemed like such a nice man. Whoever would have thought he'd turn out a reet villain? Ooh, it's all over tip papers this morning. How Monty Muzzle's fundraising funfair was a big fake, and how a certain ice cream vendor and his dog brung him to justice. Ooh, careful with that. It's my last one, and it's reserved for Mr. Paneer. Abn, I couldn't help noticing that little item in the society section. The one about your master and Miss Flit. It's true, then. Been keeping it a secret, those sly devils. You be sure and give Wallace my felicitations. The sly devil. <laughs> Much obliged, Pat, but Mr. Paneer already gave me my free sample. Ooh! <laughs> That's from today's idle chatter column, isn't it? Corker of a picture. Don't cut up magazine. That's for Mr. Paneer. Don't cut up me newspapers. What's got into the dog? Oh, 
It's you. Looking for a policeman or a postman? I'm doing double duty. No letters for you today? Very busy today, Gromit. Go past to somebody else. Cricket, prickly thicket, a country club. Your Ernest may soon be joining a country club. What do you think of that? Well, of course they want me, Mother. Why do you sound so surprised about that? Why shouldn't a country club want me for a member? Don't be like that, Mother. I, I, I didn't mean to raise me voice to you. It, it's just I thought you'd, you'd react different to me news. My news about Prickly Thicket! Hey, you're the mutt what's responsible for my incarceration, aren't you? No hard feelings, mate. Come here. I've got a little present for you. Pleasant accommodations so far as jail cells go. Pillows could be a bit plumper, but I ain't complaining. Anyway, my lawyers are on the case. They ought to be out in a fortnight at the latest. Oh, you again, eh? Come closer, will you? Can you fetch a chisel for me? I'll, <laughs> I'll give you a treat. To be discreet, tread softly. Ears peeled, eyes open. Don't let critical intelligence fall into the wrong hands. Oh, uh, others are looking for this uh, object. Oh yes, always others, Wallace. Enemy agents, spies. Saboteurs, spoil spots, fifth columnists, quizzling interlopers. Really? Managed to frustrate them all so far, no one can squeeze intelligence out of crumb. Uh, uh, no. Now, have you got all you need to get started? Uh, not quite everything. Dash it, what more can I tell you? It's not going to be an easy job. No answers yet in the, uh, flit case, Gromit. You may want to use some of my equipment. That's right. Put the thumbscrews on her. But I won't stand for any monkey business if you don't bring... Uh, looks a treat, Ladder, but I'm in the middle of a consultation right now. You're detectives, aren't you? Registered ants.
Your master didn't want it, is that what you're saying? <sighs> Put it there with the others. I'll move it inside when I've cleared some space. <sighs> Can't really leave these crates in the street all day. Ah, my good friend Panea. Glad to see you're doing your civic duty. Oh, yes. <laughs> Wouldn't want to presume on our friendship. That's why I've always respected you, Mr. Paneer. Never want to take advantage of powerful friends. You know, when push comes to shove, the law must be obeyed. Honor, duty and golf. That's the prickly thicket motto. And a fine motto it is. A motto I could easily live by if, say, someone were to invite me to join the club. Say no more, Constable. I've thought it over and... Thinky uh... neck! Crikey! What kind of trick is this? Trick? Uh, no trick. Just a little mix-up. Optical illusion. If you'll just turn the other way for a moment, I'll... Turn the other way? I am an officer of the law, Mr. Panea. But our friendship... I'm sorry, Mr. Panea, but vermin's vermin. And vermin trumps friendship every time. So, that's how it's going to be, is it? Hey, up, Gromit. Where do you come from? I weren't really thinking straight when I said your master might be prickly thicket material. He's a right good bloke, your Wallace. But, like the PC says, if he's a sportsman, I'm a banana. Close your town, Daddy. Oh, the constable's in a right grumpy mood today, isn't he? And I thought we were mates. Almost invited him to join the country club I did. Oh, well, you've saved yourself a lot of regrets. Here, this ought to soften the blow. Extreme pudding. I've been looking forward to this issue. There's supposed to be an in-depth feature on the merits of natural rubber grips versus synthetic. Hello. What's this? Blinkin' Nora. Is that who I think it is? Well, I'll be. That's our Wallace, that is. Rookie of the year. I didn't even know he played golf. Oh, he's a man of mystery and no mistake. Yes. What you thinking, Pat? Constable Dibbins, uh, this is a pleasant surprise. Uh, what brings you to, uh... Here, package for you. What do you suppose this is about? It's from Prickly Thicket. Well, I never. They're inviting me to become a member. And they've even enclosed the club's official tank top. Imagine that, lad. A country club. Oh, uh, we're going up in the world, eh, Gromit? <laughs> Miss uh, Flit. Please, Wallace, you needn't be so formal. Not after yesterday. Call me Felicity. Uh, yes. <laughs> About yesterday. I did leave you hanging in suspense, rather, didn't I? <laughs> Not in me. But I do have an answer for you now. Uh, you, you, you do? I couldn't take a step of this magnitude without first consulting my great aunt Prudence. And you'll be delighted to know she has given us her blessing. Isn't that wonderful? Her only caveat. <laughs> and it's almost too ridiculous to mention. <laughs> is that she forbids us to marry if... <laughs> if you're a member of... <gasps> we 
rejects the sticky picket. That's a ball of cursed cricket. We tell other sports to stick it. Golf for us is just the ticket. Hurrah! Hurrah for prickly thicket! Brother Wallace is duly sworn in in co conformance with prickly protocol. Devil if I care why it had to be Wallace, but what's done's done. Welcome to the club, Wallace. We await the opening whack. Swing the club, you tube! <laughs> Stop in the name of the law! I hereby announce that in violation of municipal bylaw number 486, as relating to sports and social clubs, use of, this club is to be closed forthwith. This is <laughs> bylaw state, and I quote. Every registered golf and country club must be in possession of no fewer than one fully functioning golf course. Oh, yes. Oh, by yeah. law. Right, by law. Pardon if I'm a bit, uh, shaky on the upswing, but are you saying that uh, we don't actually have a golf course? Not at the moment, anyway. Had one once. Dashed fine one it was, too. Uh, but uh, the deed was lost. Somewhere within the walls of this club. Some little time ago. 1649? Rotten year. It's a long and terrible story. It's history. And as of tomorrow morning, prickly thicket will be history too. Enjoy your last day at the club, gentlemen. Well, there's only one thing for it, I reckon. Like the booby bobby said, let's enjoy our last day at the club. Capital idea. Perhaps I can get a game of chess in before tiffin. I still need to work on me cushion technique. Uh, uh, pardon me, but but PC Dibbins is going to shut Prickly Thicket Golf Club because it hasn't got a golf course. Oh, that's that's what what he says. Cheek. And it hasn't got a golf course because the deed proving its existence is lost. Yes, deed. Aye, that's right. Well, then. There's nothing for it but to find the deed. Easier said than done, laddie. Prickly thicketers have been searching for centuries. Impossible quest, Wallace. Impossibilities are our speciality at Golden Retrieval. Of course. Now I remember. That's what I hired you fellows to find. The deed to Prickly Thicket Golf Course. Me clue finder. Ought to come in handy for finding clues. Eureka! A clue! The golden key shall only be obtained by him who earned it. The golfer who, without a clue, took up the game and learned it. To hook and slice is never nice unless ye have direction. A book depicts in stages six the order of perfection. Aha! I've got it now! You have? Rook to pawn three! I'm still missing a clue or two. Could this be a clue? Only the man who has mastered the Ganges and made the impossible shot is worthy to pocket the porcelain key that will slide in the porcelain slot. Master the Ganges? Does that mean the river? Or could it mean... Could it mean... what? Nothing. Just a silly superstition. There's bound to be a clue nearby. What 
upstairs. Behold the foolish puppy dog, he keepeth very busy. He seeketh for the silver key, and spinneth till he's dizzy. The hours pass, he stoppeth not, in daytime nor in nighttime. Methinks he'll findeth not his prize, until you see the right time. Lincoln, Nora, this is a riddle and no mistake. <laughs> Call that poetry, Wallace. I think it's a clue, Major Crumb. Be careful with that book. It's our greatest treasure. The golfer's path to perfection. Aye, our first chairman spent his whole life devising this system. But now, it's lost to history. All that remains of the path is the sixth and final step. Major Crumb, you've no wish to see Prickly Thicket close down. Heaven forbid! So perhaps you could help me recover the deed? Helping others? Out of the question. Against club rules. Quite an honor. Mr. McBiscuit being elected chairman, I mean. Oh, honor has nothing to do with it. We don't hold elections for the chairmanship here, Wallace. We play for it, like men in the chairman's tournament. Oh, and how long has Duncan held the seat? Ever since he won the chairman's tournament. Call yourself a detective? You're not paying attention, Wallace. So, in theory, anyone can become chairman of Prickly Thicket? Anyone who beats Duncan McBiscuit in the chairman's tournament, yes. Reckon you're a contender, eh, Wallace? What? Tea time already? So it is, so it is. Thank you, my good man. Here's something for your efforts. Can you help me decipher this clue, Mr. Paneer? Only the man who has mastered the Ganges... Shh! It's a story I first heard at my grandmother's knee about a secret golf grip that men have devoted their lives to discovering. Oh, that's old stuff and nonsense. The Ganges grip is an old wives' tale and nothing more. About this Ganges grip, Mr. Paneer, I don't suppose you'd be able to demonstrate. You got the wrong fellow, Mr. Wallace. It's closely guarded secret, they say. Oh, it's a load of old free. If you listen to him, Wallace, you'll be snookered from the start. About this Ganges grip. You'll have to ask someone else, Mr. Wallace. Ganges? I can tell you all about the Ganges. I've been there. It's wet. Ah. Oh. You're welcome to watch, Wallace, but don't stand in me light. Oh, this is most discombobulating. It's hopeless. Fancy a game then?
I'm a bit new to the game. Go ahead, give it a shot. See if you can pot one of the red balls. Oh, may I? Take a shot, Mr. Wallace. Oh, bad luck. Blinking egg? By thunder, man! That's not cricket! And it's not snooker, neither. Time, everybody. Time for a joke. I say, I say, I say. I'm wearing my lucky golf socks today. Lucky golf socks? What the devil are lucky golf socks? The pair with a hole in one. A sock! We are whole in one! <laughs> Clever workmanship. That there's a brass butler. Built by Goodman Witless in 1648. Give it up, man. You're never going to find that deed. Don't you realize prickly thicketers have been after it for more than 300 years? Yes, but they didn't have what I've got. Pig-headed optimism, you mean? I say, that one's a rummin. Aye, that one were Goodman Wetless. Him and his evil hellhound Gimlet. A pox and a pair of them. It's them for purse in the predicament we're in today. Really? Aye, for when the devilish Duchess Flit were seizing the golf course and planting flowers on it, my poor Grandpa Rory were desperate. He loved his prickly thick at golf course, like a wee wifey. But he couldn't save it from Flit's men and their terrible tulip bulbs. So when they snatched the course from him, robbed him, they did. He hid the deeds to the land, hoping one day to reclaim it and restore it to the noble cause of golf. And that were his biggest mistake. Hiring them two buffoons to help. You mean... Goodman Witless. Aye, and Gimlet is devil whelp. Local cloakmakers and jacks of all trades they were. Grandpa Rory hired them to build a security system to protect the deed. Well, they built it all right. And made a dashed fine job of it, too. Brilliant, inspired. Flit's men did their damnedest, but they couldn't disable the system. And nor could anyone else, including Goodman Witless. Thanks to him, the deeds are still locked away in the walls here somewhere, guarded by his tick-tock state-of-the-art security system. Well, uh, I've done a bit of tinkering myself with security systems. Uh, do you know how this one works? Not a flippin' clue. You need three keys to switch it off, that's all I can. A gold one, a silver one, and a porcelain one. And these keys, uh, where are they to be found? Search me, pal. They're well hid, too. Got security systems of their own, they say. It takes three keys to find the deed, you say? Aye, a golden one. A silver one, and a porcelain one, all hidden somewhere about the club. Hmm. This Goodman Witless, he must have been ahead of his time uh, to design such an elaborate security system. And then forget how to turn it off. Blithering nincompoop, if you ask me. Hmm. 
for a fire. The prickly thicket flame burns eternal. I say, that face looks familiar. Gonna see how? Unless you were round about these parts 400 years ago. That there dusty old dowager is Duchess Flit. Her family owned much of the land hereabouts in those days. And that chappy sneaking out the back that were my great 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 grandpa, Lord Rory McBiscuit, come down for his holidays and missed the last coach back to Scotland. I do see a slight resemblance. Aye, he were a bonny lad, and a great one with the lassies. The Duchess couldn't get her fill of him, but as you can see, he cared for nubbit mucking about in a golf course. Twas Grandpa Rory who built Prickly Thicket. And uh, what did Duchess Flint have to say about that? Oh, threw her in a right rage it did. Had her men seize the course by force. Aye, and that's when her troubles began. Duchess Flit. But of course, she's the spitting image of Felicity. Hush your tongue, Wallace. My Felicity is an angel. That there Duchess Flit were never a nasty old knobdober. If it hadn't been for her seizing the golf course, Grandpa Rory never would have had to hide the deed, and we wouldn't be in this sport of bother we're in today. Automatic golf ball cleaner. Ah, time to tee off. Oh, who am I going to humiliate today? Now is it? Is that the best we can do for a challenger? No. Watch how it's done, laddie. Ha! Do you see that? All in one! Am I a McBiscuit or am I a McBiscuit? Your turn, Wallace, unless you want to throw in the towel. Pick a club. It's your turn, so take a shot. You can swing from the laddie's tee right there, or the lassie's tee down there. For you, I'd recommend the lassie's tee. How does he do it, you ask? Talent. Sheer talent. Not really cricket to make you keep playing, Wallace, but if you're set on it, there are the clubs.
Not at... That wouldn't be my club, no, would it? I'll hold the pose a while, in case anyone's of a mind to take a wee picture. Your turn, Wallace. Or did you want to give up? The complete Gomeril's Guide to Golf. My Grandpa Rory were a great one for self-improvement. Hmm. Oh, ball in the rough, eh? Aye. Uh. Grandpa Rory had his share of heartaches. What do you think of that, eh? Oh, lucky shot. Lucky? That were my biscuit magic, that were. Quite a talker, eh? Grandpa Rory knew how to tell a tale, so they say. Oh, I, I think the pressure was getting to him. Hmm. Aye, that were Grandpa Rory's darkest hour. Either that clock's wrong or I am. Hmm, springs could do with a bit of tensioning. Nonsense, clock's on thicket time, that's all. What could do with a bit of minor maintenance? Uh, now then, I wonder... Crivens! Yes, yeah, found it's it. It's the silver key. Tee-hee time, everybody. Time for a joke. Hmm. Anyway. Uh, fella invites his new neighbor to join him for a round of golf. Neighbors never played golf before. Oh, yes. Awful decent. Very public spirited. Everything's fine till they get to the seventh hole when the neighbor hits his ball into the bunker. He racks it and racks it but can't get it out of the sand. You're not using the right club, says his friend. I haven't got it anymore, says the neighbor. Hasn't got it? Why in heaven's name not? Because you told me to eat me sandwich before we came out. Eat me sandwich! <laughs> sandwich. Tee-hee time, everybody. Time for a joke. I say, I say, I say. Golfer says to his caddy, I'd move heaven and earth to break a hundred on this course. And the caddy replies, Try heaven. You've already moved most of the earth. 
rather amusing, that one. <laughs> You've already moved most of the earth! <laughs> oh, ho, 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 the movement! <laughs> Tee hee time, everybody. Time for a joke. I say, I say, I say. Fella takes forever at his tea, waggling his club and taking practice shot after practice shot. What's the matter with the fellow? Hit the blasted ball! That's what his golf buddy says. You see, the fella explains, me wife's watching me from the clubhouse, and I want to make this a perfect shot. And the friend says, forget it, man. You'll never hit her from here. <laughs> You'll never hit her from here! <laughs> <laughs> Tee hee time, everybody. Time for a joke. I say, I say, I say. When I miss a short pot, I don't let it get to me. I just look around. Think what a lovely day it is and how lucky I am to have me health. Then I take a deep breath. Very sensible reaction, but why the deep breath? Gives me strength to break the putter. <laughs> Gives me strength to break the putter! <laughs> Time, everybody. Time for a joke. I say, I say, I say. Did you hear the one about... <laughs> Awfully public spirited of the constable to take over postal delivery. Perhaps not. I don't think that's a good idea. Closed on account of vermin. Dear me, I did so like their cheese rabbit. Though, come to think of it, uh, it did seem a bit chewed around the edges last time I had it here. How do, Wallace? How goes your first and last day at your new club? Couldn't you see fit to spare Prickly Thicket, Constable Dibbins? Quite devoted to the place, ain't you? Considering you only got sworn in this morning. It's only that, uh, well... The club has such a long history and a... Uh... Aye, an history of decline and fall. And blatant discrimination when it comes to new members. I beg your pardon? They don't know what they missed out on. Passing over a crack golfer like me. I could have put Prickly Thicket back on map. I could have showed them that... Showed them what? It wouldn't mean anything to you, Wallace, but plenty of clubs are killed to have a member who knows the... the Ganges grip. A master of the Ganges grip, eh? Oh, you've got hidden depths, Constable. That I have. And since how nobody seems to appreciate them, my depths are gonna stay hidden. Imagine! A master of the secret Ganges grip right here in town. That's right. And I ain't going to give up that secret to no prickly thicketer.
The constable's got plenty on his mind as it is. Don't want to bother him with trivialities. As a crack golfer, Constable Dibbins, perhaps you could give me a pointer or two. I'm still a bit new to the game and... Uh... Here, give me that. You're holding it all wrong. You've got to... Ah, I see. Very clever. <laughs> uh, clever? Think you can trick an officer of the law into divulging the Ganges grip, do you? Um... Well, since your club's about to close, I'll show you anyway. Now watch closely. There you are. Got that? Uh, I think I've grasped it. The Ganges grip? Is it like this? No, no, no. It's like this. First with your left hand, you... Oh, no, you don't. Pardon? You want to see the Ganges grip? I'll show you the blinking Ganges grip. Happy now? Um... Oh, no, no. You want to see the Ganges grip? I'll show you the blinking Ganges grip. Happy now? Um. Uh, no clues around here. Nothing but nut butter in there. Mm, must be awfully popular stuff. Uh, afraid I can't quite make out what you're saying. This is had some of that Mr. Paneer's fancy nut butter. Now she can't open a gob. Oh dear, sticky situation that. Ha 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 ha! I know. Wonder if he's got any more. <laughs> Mr. Paneer's nut butter did that to you, did it? Magic. Don't do out to disturb the peace now, will you, Wallace? <laughs> Dear me, was that only yesterday? Seems as if it's been a month. Super sticky nut butter. <laughs> I had that muzzle fellow pegged as a bad one from the outset. Twitch, how are you getting along, old boy? Eating us out of house and home he is. Afternoon, Mr. Gabberly. Is it? I hadn't checked. Back off. Well, if it ain't the blinking hero, what caught the bad old dog napper? <laughs> Monty Muzzle. How's the ice cream business treating you, mate? <laughs> this is a clear case of wrongful imprisonment. What did I do to deserve this? You kidnapped my dog, for starters. Oh, that. Well, merely a misunderstanding. Ah. 
as I suspected. Uh, no clues in town. What in heaven's name happened to him? You know all about hidden objects, don't you? Today, lad, prickly thickets on a bit of a sticky wicket, and only golden retrieval can save the day. Grab our detection kit and let's... What's up, Chuck? Uh, uh, good afternoon, ladies. Uh, is there anything I can do for you? <laughs> Oh, um, um, oh dear me. My grandniece is a tender-hearted girl, Mr. Wallace. She hates to see a man ruin his life. Uh, I don't believe I've had the pleasure, Mrs. Uh... It's Miss Flit, actually. And I make it a rule never to shake hands with individuals who belong to certain organizations. <gasps> <laughs> Golf is a barbaric practice, Mr. Wallace. Those caught in its snares inevitably descend into squalor, destitution, and madness. It's all there in this little booklet. Save yourself, Wallace! Here we are on the 18th green, and it comes down to McAllister versus Boggins. McAllister there in the white hat and the mauve knickerbockers. He addresses the ball. If you don't mind. If Boggins can make his putt, he'll be the new champion of East Westerly. It's only a three-footer, but Boggins has a habit of choking on his short game. Turn that off this instant! <laughs> oh, that stamp's not been frank. I'll just... Attend to your guests, Mr. Wallace. <laughs> Oops, I dropped me eavesdropper. Always handy to have a spanner to hand. Painter was passing through town on the way to Bristol. Not a bad likeness, eh? A glass of milk. Makes a change for the sort of tipple you imbibe at your club, I'll venture. Very good. Drink your milk. At least that's a wholesome activity. Oh, do you think it will restore his senses, our prudence? There's always hope. Beg pardon, madam, but regarding the uh, uh, charges you've brought against me, I mean to say, is that a fair way to treat a fellow? A bit rough, if you ask me. <laughs> you see, Felicity, this is what golf does to the mind. The man is obsessed. Uh, uh, perhaps we should discuss the situation calmly over a nice copper, eh? I'll just potter into the kitchen and get some tea off the shelf. Potter? Tea off? 
He's been brainwashed, Felicity. We may be too late. I don't mean to drive you off, but I've got to get along. A long drive off? <laughs> it's hopeless. <laughs> uh, Miss Flit, I... Please, Mr. Wallace, kindly keep your obsessive golfisms to yourself. I don't think my grandniece's nerves can stand any more. Uh, I appreciate your concern, Miss Flip, but really, uh, uh, <laughs> My grandniece's condition is far too delicate to engage in conversations with madmen. Kindly direct your ravings to me. glass of milk, uh, Miss Flit? I dare say you need it more than I. Uh, a glass of milk, uh, Miss Flit? You drink it, Wallace. My constitution is too fragile at the moment to allow for rich beverages. I've enjoyed our little chat, Miss Flit. Oh, and a great pleasure meeting you, Miss Flit. But, uh, uh, Mustache? Please, try to turn your life around, Wallace. Uh, awfully pressed for time, Gromit. <laughs> Would you mind attending to our guests? Hmm? <laughs> Could we have a clean handkerchief, please? I'll leave that where it is. I appreciate your con- <laughs> My grandniece's condition is far too delicate to engage in conversations with madmen. Kindly direct your ravings to me. <laughs> oh no, I couldn't. Couldn't what, pray tell? <laughs> Not helpful, that. Lovely time. Mustache. Oh dear, that was ten pence. Must fix this hole in my pocket. I'm not giving anything to that villain Monty Muzzle. Shouldn't you be sipping cocktails at this hour with all your new friends at the club, Wallace? Glass of milk, Constable. You can't buy me off with milk, Wallace. of milk. You drink it. That's much too strong for me. A glass of milk, Mr. Paneer. No thanks. I've got to maintain my fighting form. Milk, Major. Not right now, it's almost tea time.
Time to hit the links already. Who's the lucky loser this time? Wallace, again? Come back for another drubbing, did you? Study my form. Maybe you can learn some of Looks effortless, I know. And to tell the truth, it is effortless. <laughs> now for the comic relief. Golf is a serious game, you wingnut. Get yourself a proper club or get off the course. Crimmins, are you daft, man? Swinging a club like that in a game like this. Try it again with a proper iron. How many strokes you reckon it'll take him to get off the tee? Show us your best, Wallace. Wouldn't be my club now, would it? There's a reason some of us are chairman of the club and others are top of the flops. Your turn, Wallace. Here comes the fiend of the fairway. Gonna swing from the big boys, T, this time, are you, Wallace? Wouldn't be my club now, would it? And another one straight into the cup. McBasket's on a roll today, ladies and gentlemen. Choose your weapon, Wallace, if you still got the guts. Wouldn't be my club now, would it? A legend in me own time. No shame if you want to run away crying like a wee bairn. If not, there are the clubs.
See that? By heck, the chairman's missed his shot. No, I never. That were the rubbish club what missed it. Well, your turn. Pick a club. Stand back, everyone. The pro's gonna show us how it's done. Step up to the D, Wallace. He did it again. He missed another shot. Um, something's not right. What's going on? All right then. Which club are you going to use? Can you do a few practice swings for me, Wallace? I want to study your how not to do it technique. Wallace sunk the ball. No, he never. Uh, it's a trick. He, uh... Crevens. Crikey. Oh. The golden key. Oh, the, the golden key. key. Give it up, man. You're never going to find that. Yes. Pig. Club again, you should get back again and make the most of it. Only a few more hours till permanent closure. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, I know it's an unconventional detecting procedure, but it would be very helpful if I could dip the handle of me golf club into your sticky nut butter, if you'll permit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't follow. Here you are, Mrs. Gabberly. This ought to do the trick. Oh, I can talk again. Now look what you've done, Wallace. And I'll have a few choice words for you tonight. Mouth in working order again, is it, Mrs. Gabberly? Oh, it is. Nasty business, that. Ooh, thought I'd never speak again. Aye, it were an impossible dream. While it lasted. Wait till he gets his nut butter stew tonight. No ill effects from the nut butter, then? No, thank heavens. My jaw's in perfect working order again. Take blinking super glue to keep that thing shut. I wonder, Mrs. Gabberly, uh, would you mind awfully if I uh, dip the handle of my golf club into your sticky nut butter? If it'll help you with your detective work, help yourself. I want nothing more to do with the stuff. Much obliged. Now then, about the Ganges grip, I was wondering... You're holding the blinking club upside down, give me that! The trick is to... Hey, think you can steal me secrets, do you? All right, take a gander at this. There now, catch. 
catch that, did you? Huh? What trick are you trying to pull, Wallace? Take your pigging club and bug off, Wallace. I haven't got time for all your sh shenanigans. Much obliged, Constable. Better get back to that club of yours. Just a few hours left till closing time. Reckon Dibbins has taught me all I need to know. Crikey, O'Reilly, this is most irregular. Oh, <gasps> the Ganges grip. I told you, Paneer, there's no such... <sighs> By heavens, he's crazy. A and key. Talk about a hole in one. like a match. The porcelain key that will slide in the porcelain slot. to be genuine. So you see, PC Plod, Prickly Thicket has a wee golf course after all. I see. And where is this land exactly? Well... Mm -hmm. If you can't even establish that, gentlemen, I don't see how... Gangway! Gangway! Used to be in reconnaissance, don't you know? Damn hand at topography. Let me see now. Bit of a rise to the north, river bisecting the 11th fairway, grove of oaks to the west. Interesting. What, what, is, is, it? what is it? Naturally, some of the landmarks have disappeared in the intervening years, but if my guess is correct, the 18th green is located precisely on the spot of ground now known as... 62 West Wallaby Street. Well, I'll be. And it's not just my house that's in danger. If Chairman McBiscuit gets his way, the golf course will end up covering most of the... But I'm still jiggered if I understand why you're playing golf through the middle of town. If I win the Chairman's Tournament, I'll be named Chairman of Brickley Thicket, Mrs. Gabbley. It's only the club chairman who can call off the wrecking ball. Why is the Chairman's Tournament got to be played here? Well, as the deeds show, Mrs. G, we're standing on the site of the original Brickley Thicket golf course. You see, it's all very logical if you've stopped to think about it. Chairman McBiscuit sinks his butt, moving him to 20 under par. But let's face it, Pat, you haven't a prayer. 
Oh, I'm not chucking in the trilby just yet. I've still two holes to play, remember? And I've got one clear advantage. The greatest helper a golfer ever had. Me remote activated auto caddy. Watch this. Uh, 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 oh, here, Comet, how do you like to man the controls for a while, eh? <laughs> Get away with ya! Give up new while you're still behind! Have you not been humiliated enough? Not by half. Uh, which way to the next tee? Well, let's make things interesting at least. Two holes left to play. The wee short hole starts here. And it ends oh, right over there. What a shot! All in one for Chairman McBiscuit. He's on fire today, ladies and gentlemen. Now he strikes to the 18th tee. The long hole starts right here. And it ends. Oh, buy it for the Bobby Dazzler. Clean out of sight. Why, Pania, where's it going to come down then? Let me see now. The 18th hole. Yes, that would be... 62 West Wallaby Street. Oh, yeah. Now, you can play the two holes in either order. Play them both at the same time, if you like. First man to finish the pair of them wins the tournament. What do you see? I say... Uh, uh, that's a very sporting offer. I accept. Right then, afraid I haven't got time to hang around here and watch you muff your shorts. I have a victory party to get to. You'd best follow me back to the 18th green, Paneer. You'll not want to miss commentating on my match-winning putt. Hmm. Now then, which hole shall we tackle first? All right then, the long hole. Oops, uh, let me try that once more. It'll take a good strong club to get me all the way to West Wallaby Street. Which one to choose? Oh, I seem to be off my game, lad. I'll fetch me a club and I'll give it another go. Ah, me blistering iron. Again? It'll take a good strong club to get me all the way to West Wallaby Street. Which one to choose? Ah, yes, the Ganges Grip. Uh, not the best club for the occasion, perhaps. Not an easy shot, this. Uh, does the auto caddy have any suggestions? What cheek! Don't move the ball, Gromit. That's cheating.
Eee, it's good to have young'uns about flat again. Make a decision to save his life, that one. Go help him choose a club, else we'll be here all night. Eey, I've never seen anything like it. Your Wallace is golfing to save the house, but by the time he reaches the green, he'll be ready for the old folks' home. Hey, no messing with me fan grommet. I need it to keep cool. Wallace doing? Don't know much about golf, Pat, but I get the feeling he ain't exactly setting the course on fire. How's Duncan doing? Ooh, must be close to winning by now, I reckon. Why don't you go check? Oh, it's you. Looking for a policeman or a postman? I'm doing double duty. No letters for you today? Listeners, it isn't over yet. Not till the ball goes into the cup here at the end of the 18th hole. We've got the ball, but there is the cup. That's the burning question this afternoon. A question our own Duncan McBiscuit would give his best chipping wedge to answer. Biscuit is the reigning champion. The wrecking ball, they call it, and we can... No distractions, please. This tournament requires my full attention. time already. So it is, so it is. Thank you, my good man. Here's something for your efforts. What the backswing? What follow through? McBiscuit has chosen to use a... Ah, private! Thrilling game, what? Heart hasn't raced like this since the old days back in the trenches. Had some jolly putting contests down there, we did. Did you hear that, Private? What a fight! Who'd have thought golf was such a blood sport? 
Don't suppose you'd like to put a friendly wager on the game? Quite right. Gambling's a beastly habit. No distractions, please. This is the moment of truth. Stay with us, ladies and gentlemen, as we follow every move that reigning champion McBiscuit makes. What about Wallace? The public wants to hear about Wallace, too. How's Wallace doing? Lagging a bit, I fear, but he's made of the right stuff. He's a prickly thicketer. How's Duncan doing? Leading the board at the moment, but the battle isn't over till the last shot's been fired. What's this? I say, I say, I say. I play golf in the low 80s. If it's any hotter than that, I stay home. Best sensible, if you ask me. Wouldn't want to risk heat stroke. I say, I say, I say, I've finally worked out why the golf pro always tells me to keep my head down. He doesn't want me to see him laughing. Just unprofessional, laughing on the links. Our champion hesitates. Seems he's spotted something. Something long forgotten, lost beneath the floorboards at 62 West Wallaby Street. Could it be the 18th hole? No, no such luck, I'm afraid. It's just a mole. So, the search continues. I say, I say, I say, I never try to improve my position by kicking the ball. That's what caddies are for. Balderdash! Caddies are for carrying clubs! I say, I say, I say, my golf pro told me how I could shave eight strokes off my score. Skip one of the par threes. Hot advice for a golf pro? Quite a situation we have here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, now, which club to use? Uh, what do you think, lad? In the pink of health, Gromit. Thanks for asking. How's Duncan doing? Uh, not half bad, unfortunately. I say, I say, I say. I asked the vicar if it's a sin to play golf on a Sunday. The way you play, says he, it's a sin any day of the week. Very amusing, Gromit. No more jokes, Gromit. I've got to concentrate on me game. I say, I say, I say. How many golfers does it take to screw in a light bulb? Four. Afraid I don't get it, Pat. Some other time, Duck. And we're back, broadcasting live from the Prickly Thicket Chairman's Tournament here at beautiful 62 West Wallaby Street. If you're just joining us, I'm Mr. Panier, and I'm here with top-seeded player Duncan McBiscuit. We're on the green of the 18th hole. At least, uh, we think this is the green for the 18th hole. To be honest, we're having a right old to-do trying to find the actual hole. Are you positive this is the spot? Well, I 
copied me note straight from the old deed. Thirteen lengths southwest of the tree, it says. Maybe you're measuring with the wrong club. There's only one official prickly thicket measuring club, and this is it. <laughs> yes, this is it, ladies and gentlemen, the thrilling finale to a thrilling contest. Stay tuned and you won't want to miss a moment of the drama. He's got the notes. Please, Gromit, don't put in on me broadcast. You want to take over the microphone, do you? Please, Gromit, don't put in on me broadcast. You're not taking this measuring club. Not till I've found the hole and sunk my putt. Dogs know about digging stuff up. Can you sniff out the 18th hole for me? Ah, oh, you're no use at all. Stuck I may be, but your master's twice as stuck as what I am. Oi, dogs ain't allowed in the golf course. All right, you can stay, considering it's still your house. For now. Where in blazes is that cup? You know something, don't you? Mushrooms? There, there, my dear. Oh, it's only Gromit. If only you could reason with him, Gromit. But how could you? You're just a dumb animal. He'll find golf is a deadly addiction. An affliction that will lead him to a dark and terrible place. But when he finally hits rock bottom, I shall run to his side. You've the patience of a saint, my dear. Thank you, Great Aunt Prudence. Has it happened? Has poor Wallace been ruined by golf? I can't bear this weight much longer. Patience, Felicity. Perhaps I could turn the radio on, just for a moment. Restrain yourself. You'll stay true to your master, won't you, Gromit? Even when his golfing obsession has caused him to lose everything. And he ends up in a pit of squalor and degradation. So shall I. When he's sunk as low as he can go, he'll turn around, and there I shall be, to lift him up again. We must be brave, you and I. There's nothing we can do to halt Wallace's slide. But when he lands in the muck, we must be there for him, to point the way back to clean living. I suppose a dog always believes his master can do no wrong. Great-hearted beasts, dogs. Foolishness, I call it. If only you could tell your master to abandon this golf obsession and return home at once. This is becoming tiresome. Gromit can't do that, Aunt Prudence. Only the love of a good woman can redeem him. And only after he's reached the pit of despair. Well then, tell him to hurry up and reach the pit of despair double quick. I haven't got all afternoon. What is this ridiculous dog on about? Perhaps he wants a treat, Aunt Prudence. I don't believe in treats. They sap character. Yes, ladies and gents, this could be it. We could be on the verge of the game-winning pot. If only Chairman McBiscuit can find the hole. Turn that off! Duncan McBiscuit! He's one of them too! They're all the same, my dear. 
Yes, indeed, Mr. McBiscuit will stop at nothing to win the tournament and off. I have no idea how he's doing, but I feel the worst. Duncan doing? What an odd question. I really haven't given it any thought. <laughs> How's he doing? <laughs> and who, pray, is Duncan? I say, I say, I say, what's a golfer's favourite book? Hmm? How should I know? The Caddy Pillar. <laughs> really? This is hardly a time for humour. No, no more. Please, no more. I say, I say, I say, I've been golfing so long, my handicap is in Roman numerals. <laughs> Hardly appropriate material for the present audience, I don't think. We'll have no more of your so-called humour, thank you very much. McBiscuit is the reigning champion and long-time chairman of the Prickly Thicket Country Club. But can he defend his title against Challenger Wallace? Up until now, McBiscuit has left his rival in the dust. But his game seems to have deserted him here, at the end of the course. Or is it the course that has deserted him? Keep listening to find out. This is no time for jokes. Joke book. Oh, this is a good one. I say, I say, I say. Might surprise you to hear it, but I'm a scratch golfer and all. You? A scratch golfer? That's right. I write down all me good scores and scratch off all the bad ones. And scratch off all the bad ones! <laughs> Again? Don't mind if I do. I say, I say, I say, I got a new set of golf clubs for me wife the other day. Thought it were a pretty good trade, myself. <laughs> Thought it were <laughs> a pretty good trade! <laughs> Time again. I say, I say, I say. Two ants are in a sand trap, watching a duffer flailing away. Quick, says one to the other, get on the ball before he kills us. Get on the ball before he kills us! <laughs> a wrecking ball, they call, and we can see what. How's Duncan doing? He's doing blinking marvellous, thank you very much for asking. And you can tell that to the boat what sent you. How's Wallace doing? Can't rightly say, but I can guess. Awful. How's Duncan doing? Well, you can see for yourself he's... He's got it in the bag. He's got it in the bag. You heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. Chairman McBiscuit has got it in the bag. Almost. What a backswing. What follow through. McBiscuit has chosen to use a nine iron here, and it appears to be doing the trick. He's managed to pry off a half dozen floorboards with it, and he's not done yet. 
Others might have gone with a wood, perhaps a driver, always good for bashing through solid objects. But McBiscuit has gone for a crowbar technique, and it's serving him well. How's Wallace doing? He's at about... he just... Uh, that's a good question. I'd better check on Wallace. Me listeners won't want to miss anything important. Mushrooms? There, there, my dear. Oh, it's only Gromit. And he's still pondering. A tense moment, ladies and gents. He's got a lot riding on this shot as well as... Switch it off! Oh, I can't bear it! There, there, my dear. Still dithering his Wallace? Can't make up his mind which club oh, to... It sounds as if his wits are almost gone. Shan't be long now, I expect. I mentioned it's a beautiful day here in the town center where the prickly thicket champions tournament is winding down to the final holes. Uh, and what a tournament it's been, let me tell you. A veritable battle of the titans, you might call it. Only one of the titans seems to have let the occasion get to him. In fact, he seems paralyzed by indecision to tell the truth. But at least he's still standing, ah, Wallace? Standing like a blinking statue, if you ask me. Staring at his clubs, pondering, pondering. Or oh, waiting for inspiration to strike him on the noggin. And he's still pondering. A tense moment, ladies and gents. He's got a lot riding on this shot as well as... A mood of expectation grips the crowd. It'll take a good strong club to get me all the way to West Wallaby Street. Which one to choose? Mrs. Gabony's new stand has been specially kitted out for the occasion. It's now a cooling off point for our contenders. And for the crowd too, if the crowd decides to turn out. Nice jug of ice water to quench the thirst perhaps? Or is it lemonade? Only one way to find out I suppose. March right up there and demand a glass. Oh, and there's a lovely fan set up over there. Oscillating fan, I believe. Though at the moment it's blowing in just one direction. A steady aim, has that fan? Yes, sir, it's certainly edge of your seat stuff here at the Champions Tournament. Oh, and there's a lovely fan set up over there. Fan. Please, Gromit, don't put in on me broadcast. How's Wallace doing? Not so hot, I'm afraid.
let's try the bouncing rock. Oh, a bit frustrating, this. Oh, bad luck. A mighty swing, but the ball has bounced right back to the tee. What are the odds? Uh, now, which club to use? Oh, what do you think, lad? Lofting iron, perchance? Let me try that once more. He struck again, as our Forrest, and unfortunately, with exactly the same result. Is he ever going to get off that tee? It'll take a good strong club to get me all the way to West Wallaby Street. Which one to choose? Brassy shot, you think? Brave swing indeed, but once again the ball bounces back to the point of departure. Uh, now, which club to use? Uh, oh, what do you think, lad? Ah, yes, the Ganges grip. And he's made his decision. This is the moment of truth. Can he do it? Uh, not the best club for the occasion, perhaps. A long straight drive, straight up, and straight back down. Wallace's nerves are strained to breaking point, and so are ours, to be quite frank. Has he fallen asleep? It's been known to happen. No, reckon he's still awake. He just blinked. And it's a well-known fact. People never blink when they're blinking well asleep. No, it's just nerves and good old-fashioned indecision, that's what it is. Huh? Short hole ought to be a bit easier. Oh dear, that's going to be a tough shot. Shot, ladies and gentlemen. Spectacularly bad, that is. Straight into the sewer. Another stroke of misfortune for the underdog Wallace. Nothing for it but to take the plunge, eh, lad? Not exactly a picnic in the garden, but at least it's dry down here, eh, Chuck? Now to locate the ball and chip it back out. Shouldn't be too difficult a uh, task. Oh dear. See anything resembling a ball, lad? Uh, besides mushrooms, I mean. Hmm. A bit cream cracker, to be honest. The air down here doesn't exactly do wonders for the Constitution, does it? How's Duncan doing? Haven't a clue, old chump. I'll give it a shot. No use, I'm afraid. I'll give it a shot. No use, I'm afraid. People sometimes ask me, Mr. Pinia. How does a grocer like you get into sports broadcasting? And it's a fascinating tale, let me tell you. One afternoon, 
I was sitting behind the counter of his shop, not a customer in sight, and the radio turned on to the nippery open, ladies' day if I recall, when suddenly a spirit of uncharacteristic levity overcame me, and I found myself picking up a parsnip from the vegetable display and commentating it like it were a microphone. Imagine the embarrassment when I looked up and discovered I weren't alone and that Mr. Gallagher, the ironmonger, was standing at the counter with two pounds of beetroot ready to be served. You'd think he'd have laughed at me, but no. In fact, he told me I were born to broadcast and sent me to see his cousin, what works at Natter Time Radio, the talk station, who offered me a tryout. Ah. The rest, as they say, is history. I'm reminded of a little joke, which is, what vegetable in the produce shop makes the best sports announcer? Can you guess? No? Shall I tell you? It's the commentator. <laughs> get it? The commentator. Boy, that's a good one. Now let's get back to the action and check on the tournament. No progress on the golfing front, I'm afraid. Looking for a ball in this mushroom patch is like looking for a needle in the proverbial. What a tournament it's been! What a contest! Oh. Gromit, old chum, I've got to admit it. I'm in the rough and no mistake. Golfer Wallace, down there in the sewer, taking stroke after stroke. Whack, whack, whack. down here, you may want to swing by Paneer's Produce, catering to the vegetable needs of the greater metropolitan area for over 25... I do fancy a mushroom surprise, but not this early in the day. Four foot ten, why do you ask? Dear. Oh, it's only Gromit. Ah! What in heaven's name? Bad dog, bad dog. There he is, and there's no polite way to say this down in the sewer flailing about with his clubs in the filth. And they called him the Rookie of the Year. Who would have thought Wallace would end up down there? Yes, it, it's happened. Just as I said it would. He's finally hit rock bottom. And only I can save him. His angel of mercy. I'm coming, my poor, addle-headed golfing fool. Off with you now. Shoo! Wherever did she run off to? Oh, 
down there in the darkness, in the stench and the ooze, with naught but the steady drip, drip, drip of the sewers or a... Oh, there you are, Gromit. Well, no luck down here, I'm afraid. If only these pesky mushrooms hadn't... Wallace! It's fled. So it's true! You finally hit rock bottom! As great Aunt Prudent said you would! It had to happen, I know, but oh, so quickly! No matter, your angel of mercy has come for you. I will lift you from this place of degradation back into the light. I'll wipe your burning brow and nurse you back to health. I'll surround you with flowers and music and mushrooms. Out of here! Get me out of here! Oh, you poor thing, you've had a fright. Everywhere, everywhere, mushrooms! Come up to the flat, love. I'll fix you a nice cup of tea. I'm not sure I know what to make of that, lad. Do you? Don't move the ball, Gromit. That's cheating. You never see this sort of situation in the British Open. How do I get this ball out through that hole? Brassy shot, you think? No, not a brassy shot. Ah, this trusty clique won't let me down. Till now. The Baffy can always give it a go. Not a baffy shot, this. The whiffy? Why not? Tricky shot, really. Of course, a battering buster field. Frustrating, this. Lofting iron, perchance. Not enough lift in the lofting iron. Hmm. Cheese wedge, do you think? Much obliged. But that's the club with the Ganges crib. I'll try anything in a pinch. That sent it in the right direction, at least. Too bad about gravity. Hmm. Uh, now, which club to use? Uh, oh, what do you think, lad? Well, it 
It's about time. It's in the cup, ladies and gents. Molly says Sonky's ball. Bringing his score down to just... Did they see... 198 to 215? 235 over par. But the tournament ain't over yet. You know, Gromit, I think I'm starting to get the hang of this game. I'll take the controls now, lad. It'll take a good strong club to get me all the way to West Wallaby Street. Which one to choose? Ah, this trusty cleek won't let me down. Oh dear. Here now. This would be yours, I presume? Depositing non-postal material in Her Majesty's post boxes against the law, I'll have you know. See, it doesn't happen again. Uh, now, which club to use? Uh, what do you think, lad? In the pink of health, Tommy. Thanks for asking. Baffy can always give it a go. Pity the flag isn't in the post box, eh, Gromit? Hmm. To play the ball from where it lies, I reckon. Oi, Gromit! Any sign of the ball yet, lad? I've had my fill of mushrooms, thank you. No point in swinging without me ball. Quick, then! Wallace's ball! Oh, no! This hallway ain't big enough for the both of us! You didn't see that, and neither did you. See what? And here comes Wallace, the keen as mustard challenger, hot on the heels of our champion. The action is becoming fast and furious here at 62 West Wallaby Street. Uh, relatively speaking, that is, for our current champion is intently digging, digging away to find that elusive 18th hole and the ultimate prize. And Wallace? Well, I'm not right certain what our Wallace is up to. How's Duncan doing? Well, you can see for yourself he's... He's got it in the bag! He's got it in the bag. Now, back to our coverage of Wallace. How's Wallace doing? Listen to me commentary and you'll find out. He's still in the front garden, is Wallace? Still dithering? Off with you now. Shoo! Found well, 
on the ball, lad. Now, how to get there from here? Hmm. I'll take a whack at it, but... Not in a suitable position for the Ganges grip, I don't think. Hey! Drop that! Do something from it! Good work, lad! Oh, but we're back to square one, I'm afraid. Another try? Alright. Stop mucking up me shots, you tank! Help me, Gromit! Indeed it is. The long reign of Duncan McBiscuit has come to an end. All, All hail, hail Chairman, Chairman Wallace. Wallace! Oh, uh, uh, no need to make a fuss on my account. Oh, but there is, Wallace. Heard the entire game on the wireless. This is a new beginning for Prickly Thicket. Aye, an era of peace and goodwill and justice for all. Right, Wallace? Uh, well, uh, that is, yes, uh, I certainly hope so. As Gromit will attest, I've always been very... Gromit! No dogs allowed in the club, lad. You'll have to wait outside. Now, for my first official act as chairman... Three trumpets for all? Uh, no, Major Crump. My first official act will be to tear up old Roaring McBiscuit's deed and to save West Wallaby Street from the bulldozer. Ah, of course. Jolly good. Jolly good. You carry on, Wallace. Where is he? Where is that wee Borgen Bumpwood? Uh, you mean Chairman Wallace? He's around the corner, tearing up the deed. He can't do that! Oh, but he can. Tournament's over, and he won it fair and square. But you're forgetting about the sudden death round. Sudden death? Aye, the round where I make sure he meets a sudden death. No, no, no. Let me at him. Don't, oh, don't, don't touch him. him. No, no, no. Get a gentleman here. Let's put him this. Just 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 in the name of the law. I hereby serve notice for immediate closure. Again. Aye, again. For violation of local bylaw number 682, which prohibits the feeding of Polyporus pilus, commonly known as the ball-shaped mushroom, Tuscurus calinensis, or your commoner garden grey squirrel, and 
as the offence took place on prickly thicket property, I've no choice but to... Uh, knock it up, knock it down and bury the remains, and we're here to see you do your duty. That's right. Prickly thicket has caused quite enough trouble. Kindly point me to the chair. Well, it is too late to say it's And that's what is not my baby one. Who's been mucking about with the oscillating fan? It don't oscillate no more. Suppose I'd better join them. Miss anything important, have I? Well, uh, I haven't actually done anything yet. As you can see, we're packed like a pressure cooker full of sardines. And I wanted to discuss our options before... Discuss? Poppycock, are you a waffler or a leader, Wallace? Well, uh, uh, that is, I, uh, 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 uh. Wafflers waffle! Leaders eat! It's a trap! Everything's under control. I'm sure there's a simple way to deactivate the lock. It's a sand trap! Uh, uh, no need to panic. Uh, uh, I have an idea. Uh, but to put it into effect, I'll need to shift over to the window. Constable Dippins, uh, would it be possible for you to uh, shift over a bit? Neither possible nor permissible under current building or regulations. Uh, Mrs. Gabberly, perhaps you could wriggle over. Ooh, what if I could, love, but I can't? Stuck solid like a bummed up drain. Miss Flit, I know it's tricky, uh, but if you could just move. move... Chance will be a fine thing, young man. I'm completely boxed in. Miss Flit, would you mind moving over a bit? Where would I go? Uh, can you slide over a tad, Mr. Paneer? No chance. Uh, now, Mr. McBiscuit, if you could just move into that empty space... Aye, the space next to you, so as I can troll you! Uh, uh, perhaps not, then. Uh, Major Crumb, could you slide into the empty space? Flanking maneuver, eh? Brilliant strategy! Uh, now, uh, Miss Flit, if you could please move into... Next to you? A golf-playing fancy man who toyed with my Felicity's affections? Certainly not. But Aunt Prudence? A lady must preserve some standards of decorum. Constable Dibbins, if you can move over... I'll give the orders here, if you don't mind. And I'm ordering myself to move over. You realise, Mr. Paneer, we could have avoided this outcome if you'd have chosen a different candidate for membership. You're in the club now, ain't you? Satisfied? Could you shift over a bit, Mrs. Gabberly? Oh, I'll have a go. Uh, now, Miss Flit, if you could simply shift your weight, uh, really? uh into the empty space. This is intolerable! Miss Flit, uh, I wonder if you could just wiggle over... Uh, ...into the empty space. Oh! Mr. Paneer, if uh, you wouldn't mind sliding over... ...like this? Pardon me, Mr. McBiscuit. Could you perhaps shift your weight over a bit? I'd like to shift my fist onto your hooter for getting us into this scrape! 
Dunk, please. All right, Lassie, all right. Major Crumb? One step ahead of you, Wallace. Constable Dibbins? Perhaps I will. Perhaps I won't. Uh, Miss Flit, could you... Uh... <sighs> uh, hello, Felicity. Duncan? Why'd you do it, Felicity? Why'd you want to throw me over for a numpty like Wallace? I'm not interested in Wallace anymore. I'm not interested in any man who... golfs. I... but I'd have given it up for you, Lassie. You would? Aye, from the moment you first brushed me off, I can't you were the one for me. I tried to put my feelings into rhyme, but oh, I'm no good with words. Your eyes are as deep as the murkiest luck. Your teeth are as straight as black blue rock. You remember it? Of course I did. Your eyes aren't too shabby either. <clears throat> now, Mr. Pinning, if you move over, I know. Uh, Mr. McBiscuit? Ah, oh, shit, you're giggy, I'm shifting. Mrs. Gabbley? Say no more, Pat. hate to bring it up at a time like this, Mr. Paneer, but there is an outstanding balance on that putting magazine. I can't reach my wallet at the moment, Mrs. Gabberly. Of course you can't, love. We can settle up later. Um, Miss Flit? What an impertinence! And here we are. Oh, much obliged, everyone. Now I can put my plan into effect. Help! Robin! Do something! Help! Save us, lad! The sands of time are running out!
What's going on out there, Gromit? What's taking you so long, lad? Lend a hand, lad! A shift of poor! Get us out of here! Help! Help, I say! Help! Help! Please, help! Help! I'm trapped! I can't move my arms at all! Will you... No! No! Help! Please! Oh, help! It's Mr. Paddy here! Please help us! We can't get out! Help! Help! Is anybody there? Somebody help! in here. Uh, oh, the, the, the help! I say! Oh, dear. Oh, what a carry-on. What a kerfuffle. I say, oh, help! Help, somebody! We're trapped! Trapped! Oh! Hey! Hey! <laughs> Phew! Thanks, lad. Close friends are a fine thing, but that was a bit too close. Well, why people are so keen on country clubs is a mystery to me. Then you meant what you said in there about quitting Prickly Thicket? For you, my little sprig of heel and Just terror. a second, Felicity. I don't oh, think Duck. I've been introduced You're to this so young man. Romantic. Sand bath, most invigorating. Cleans out the pores. Reminds me of the good old days in the Sahara. You know, Constable Dibbons, I hear on Grapevine, there may be another, uh, opening at Prickly Thicket. And I've heard a certain grocery shop may be reopening soon, too. <laughs> well, old chum, I'd say Golden Retrieval's first professional investigation has gone rather... <coughs> Willis, this is rather awkward for me to say. I, I, I mean, I, I know your feelings about me. Oh, uh, you do? But you see, in the heat of adversity, I've discovered that my heart belongs to another. Oh, uh, right oh. So, please, don't say anything to prolong our agony. I must therefore return this to you. Hi, oh, heck, lad. That's two close shaves in one afternoon. I don't know about you, but I could murder a copper. Oops. Hang on, just a sec. Time for some cheese, methinks, Gromit. What do you fancy, lad? Eat Amor Wensleydale. 